So anytime we're talking about muscular tissue, we're talking about specific tissue that can contract to generate force. And if we contract something to generate a force, we are going to move something. So I want you to know that muscles equal movement. If anything moves on your body in a big picture scale, so something like your arms or your pupils and your eyes or your intestines, if they're moving, it's because muscular tissue is doing it. Now, not all muscular tissue is made the same. There are three different types of muscular tissue we should have learned already. The first type is called skeletal muscle tissue, the second cardiac, and then the third smooth. Now, one by one, skeletal muscle, is striated. What does that mean? It has stripes, right? We've got these lines here, and that's going to tell us that it's going to contract by bringing all these lines together, thus to contract the tissue, and then they can also relax and extend. So I want you to remember that skeletal muscle is striated. Secondly, we also will learn about in the brain that there's a a specific part of the brain called the primary motor cortex that can directly communicate through nerves to our skeletal muscles and we can do that consciously. So we say that skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles and they're controlled by something called somatic motor neurons. Okay, we'll learn about those later on. Now the second type of tissue looks similar to it, but a little different than skeletal muscle. So cardiac muscle, always cardia refers to the heart. So we know the heart's goal is to basically pump blood throughout the body. So it's gonna circulate blood throughout the body. And that's amazing because there's about uh, 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels in your body. So the heart's gonna pump blood through all of those tubes throughout your body. Now, that being said, we see that cardiac muscle is striated as well. We've got those stripes. So what's amazing is once you learn about how skeletal muscle works in this class, you go to a and 2 you'll learn about how cardiac muscle contracts, and it's the same mechanism. These lines come together and relax. Very cool. Just like an accordion, right? Now, that being said, this is actually an involuntary muscle because cardiac muscle is not consciously controlled by you, right? It happens automatically from your brainstem specifically. And so we say that the uh, cardiac muscle is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system, that's basically your automatic nervous system. It's doing it automatically. You don't have to think about it. And it also is controlled by hormones. So again, you don't control your hormones being released. So these two things control that cardiac muscle tissue. One other thing with the cardiac muscle tissue is that they contain small channels between the car cardiac myocytes, so the two muscle cells called gap junctions. And these gap junctions allow for basically electrical potential like positive charges to flow from one to another very rapidly. That allows basically the entire heart muscle, whether atria or ventricle, learn about it later, to contract in a like together manner, synchronously, okay? So we call that autosynchricity, right? Automatically beating, and we're beating the, the whole muscle together at one point by gap junctions. Brilliant. Lastly, but not leastly, <laughs> that's a thing, we have smooth muscle tissue. Now, smooth muscle tissue you see looks a lot different, right? Uh, this is not striated, so we say it's not striated. So instead of contracting kind of like accordion style, straight in and out, we're actually going to contract it very similar to uh, a snake, right? So when you see a snake, you see kind of a tube contracting like this, and one part will relax, one part will contract, and it's kind of like you're pushing toothpaste to the end of the roll, right? It's going to contract kind of in this manner, okay? So it's a little different than uh, striated muscle. But in the same way, we cannot control this. This is involuntary muscle, meaning what? It's going to be controlled by the same autonomic nervous system and hormones, probably different hormones, but it's going to be controlled by these two systems, endocrine system and nervous system, specifically autonomic. Now, I also want you to know that the smooth muscle is usually wrapped around hollow tubes, so wrapped around hollow tubes. What hollow tubes do you have? Well, I'll write like a little list here, right? Intestines, right? You got smooth muscle lining your intestines. Interestingly, you have smooth muscle lining your pupils, specifically in your iris. Okay, so you'll see these little smooth muscles in your iris later on in this class. And you also have big blood vessels called arteries 
that can actually narrow and relax depending on what we need for blood pressure. So basically, the muscle would be lined around that tube. So here's the tube in black with the hollow space on the inside. And if that muscle were to contract, what would happen to that tube? Well, now the tube is really, really narrow, right? And that's kind of how we contract our uh, smooth muscles, okay? Which makes sense because that's how a snake would contract, right? Like it contracts here, relaxes here, contracts here, relaxes here, pushing that food through its tract. Wonderful. Okay, so that's everything about the three types of muscle. That should have been reviewed. But we need to know the four general characteristics of these muscle tissue types, primarily focused on these skeletal muscles. So in Anatomy and Physiology 1, we're focusing on skeletal muscle because these two will be addressed more in A&P 2. But these characteristics hold true for all three. I remember characteristics of muscle tissue by C triple E. C triple E. Three E's, one C, pretty straightforward. You could probably guess, like if I were to say, what's a characteristic of a muscle? You'd probably say number one would be contractible, right? It is contractible. And I said earlier that it's able to shorten to generate force. Shorten to generate force. There will be very specific proteins in your skeletal muscles called actin and myosin that'll pull on themselves and allow those lines to close up thus making a force, thus moving part of your body, specifically in this case, your bones. We know that, right? Skeletal muscle moves the skeleton. Great. Secondly, we also have muscle cells that are extensible. What does that mean? Well, just like an accordion, instead of being just contracted all the time, what can an accordion do? It can extend past a resting state, right? So extensible means it's able to extend past a resting state. Very cool. Okay, now this kind of goes hand in hand with the second part, which is going to be elasticity. So I like to think of extensibility and elasticity kind of going together because elastic, what's an elastic thing that you've probably heard of before? Like a rubber band, right? Well, rubber bands can extend, right? Stretch past a resting state. But what do they want to do once you let go? Well, they want to snap back close together, right? So they don't want to just stay extended. They want to snap back. So elastic means there's a tension present where we want to return back to the resting state. Want to return back to resting state. Very cool. Very similar to a rubber band. And there's going to be a protein called titan funny name, right? Titan. It's going to allow that muscle to be elastic. Very cool. Now, the last one is usually the hardest one to think of yourself, and that is excitable. Excitable. This basically means it can get stimulated to contract, can get stimulated, underline, to contract. Well, if it's able to get stimulated, it means it has to have a receptor for the stimulus. And so my question to you is, when do we want skeletal muscle to contract? Well, when we want it to, right? We have neurons that are going to communicate to those muscles to tell them when to contract. Same thing with the heart muscle. When does your heart muscle need to contract? Whenever it gets told. When is the smooth muscle uh, told to contract? Whenever it gets told by uh, the autonomic nervous system and hormones. So they, the muscles don't just contract willy-nilly. They are told in a very specific manner, and that is called excitability. Now, I want to circle two, contractability and excitability, right? These are the two main things we're going to focus on. Contractability is going to be explained by a theory, which we know is true, called the sliding filament theory. Sliding filament theory. That is going to explain how our muscles contract, how they shorten. However, the excitability aspect for skeletal muscles is going to be called the neuromuscular junction. That is going to be the location at which a neuron communicates to a muscle, and it's the space where they come together. So that's going to explain how muscle cells, specifically skeletal muscle cells, can get excited. So as we go through the rest of these videos, I want you to focus on those two things, contractability, excitability, specifically for skeletal muscles.